Hello and welcome to Time of Death. I'm your host, E, And I'm your host, Riss. And together we are Time of Death. If you're new here, welcome. We are two nurses who like to talk true crime. And we like to talk about cases that have a heavy medical influence to them or cases that involve a medical professional as the perpetrator or as the victim. So this is episode 31. So let's get into it. And if you hear any squeals, it's the little baby Chawini in the room. (laughs) Her name is Lily and she's very feisty. Lily Munster. Lily Munster. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about a great case. This week's episode, we are going to be talking about the dialysis dilemma. So buckle up, boys and girls. It's going to be a it's going to be a good one. In the United States, the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, estimates that roughly 15% of the adult population are diagnosed with chronic kidney disease or CKD. CKD is a condition that exponentially increases the individual's risk of heart attack, stroke, death. Essentially, in CKD, your kidneys are not functioning optimally. The kidneys act as a filter for blood and removed a lot of waste products, etc. They're involved in blood pressure control. They're essential for life. So, because these people are functioning at below optimal kidney function, there are centers, which are dialysis centers, which help the people diagnosed with CKD by cleansing their blood once their kidneys fail. So basically, the dialysis is working as their kidneys. That's beautifully said, Riss. Thank you. No problem. (laughs) So one of these big companies that helps people with CKD is called DaVita. Have you heard of DaVita, Riss? I have. We are both very familiar with DaVita because a loved member, a loved one who shall not be named, used to be employed there. Mm -hmm. And that individual is actually the reason that I was interested in this case. Mm -hmm. So, DaVita translates in Italian to giving life, which is ironic considering what happened in 2008. Uh Uh-oh. In early 2008, at the DaVita Dialysis Center in Lufkin, Texas, there was a wave of cardiac events and fatal heart attacks of the patients coming in to receive treatment. Now, if you're familiar with dialysis patients, which I have never been a dialysis nurse. Me either. It does not appeal to me. A lot of times these patients are very fragile and they're not doing well. Granted, I worked in the hospital setting, so these people were also very not medically stable most of the time, but they are prone to different medical things happening. If you want to know about dialysis, the centers that we're talking about, specifically DaVita, is called hemodialysis. Now, there's other types of dialysis, such as peritoneal dialysis, which can be done at home. Mm -hmm. But typically, people who have worse kidney function go do hemodialysis versus peritoneal. Mm -hmm. When you've seen patients who are receiving dialysis risk, what are your thoughts? Um, Well, it depends. A lot of the time we, in the ER, we need to know the last time they had dialysis. Mm Mm-hmm what days they receive dialysis, where their AV fistula or where their fistula might be. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a big one because if they do have a fistula on either arm, that arm now becomes a limb restriction. So Mm -hmm. you can't use it for blood pressure. uh, You can't use it for IV sticks, that Mm -hmm. sort of thing. So then you always are going to think of electrolyte irregularities because if someone misses a a, you know a dialysis session and they come in and their levels might be wonky incredibly wonky Mm -hmm. uh, especially potassium level we always look for that so they're going to go on the cardiac monitor we're going to get an ekg done we're going to do blood work they're going to get the whole nine yards most of the time 
So if you're wondering what an AV fistula is, because wrist is very technical, and I got to keep it dumbed down a little bit for the rest of us who are not ED nurses. An AV fistula is essentially the merging of a vein and an artery. So essentially what this is, the AV fistula is the site of how they're able to do hemodialysis. So it allows the blood to be taken out and then returned. So it's basically like an access Mm -hmm. for hemodialysis nurses to use. Exactly. Rissa, you just keep summing it up so nicely tonight. I love it. I try. Because, uh, again, I have not practiced any type of medicine in a very long time. Well, you haven't been in the hospital. The hospital setting. (laughs) (laughs) Years and years. So, well, as, until recently. That is true. So, Riss brings up a little, uh, we'll give you guys a little update into our lives. I recently, well, I was hired a couple months ago, but I've been picking up shifts in the emergency room with Riss, but not in the medical side of things, not the medical world, but the psych world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the very, very interesting. Very different but there's definitely some overlay like uh the psych unit it's uh like an acute psych unit Mm. uh that's off the er so it's staffed by er nurses so i get to go visit my Mm. d whenever i want (laughs) she's my emotional support (laughs) person (laughs) i'm like rest Please help me. <laughs> Riz is so calm and cool and collected. She's like, okay, I got you. Just start over. If you first <laughs> you don't succeed, try again. Try, try again. <laughs> so as all these patients were falling ill, it begged the question, what was going on at the DeVita Dialysis Center in Lufkin, Texas? Introducing Kimberly Clark. <laughs> Sense. She was born November 3rd, 1973. She was also known as Kimberly Clark Fowler. She was born in Fall River, Massachusetts. She attended high school in Pollock, Texas. And during her junior high and high school years, she was a cheerleader. And when I hear cheerleader, I automatically think of that little uh, cheerleader who had the baby that you did the case on. I had the baby in the... Oh, yes, Alexi. My theory is cheerleaders are at the root of all evil. Oh. <laughs> you I'm just can't joking. Say that. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But uh, I do see a reoccurring theme here. <laughs> Anyways, during her junior year of high school, she got pregnant by her boyfriend, gave birth to her son, and then ended up having to leave the high school. Despite this challenge... And being a teen mom, Kimberly went on to get her GED and then pursued higher education at the Angelina College in Lufkin, Texas, where she got her LPN, or Licensed Practical Nurse. So she's a nurse, and she's hired, she starts working, and there seems to be a reoccurring theme throughout her different places of employment, where she was fired at least four times for various issues, including drug use, and she also faked a urine drug screening test, which is a bold move. That is bold. And I've heard of people faking it, Mm -hmm. but you have to be, like, a really cool cucumber to do something like that. Because I've heard, like, people, like, getting clean pee and, like, using condoms and stuff. Where would they keep the condom? In the anus? (laughs) How are they going to take it out? <laughs> no, I heard that they put it in their underwear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, um, I know people will take a, like a bag of urine, make sure it's mm-hmm. fully sealed, like a small Ziploc bag of urine, make mm-hmm. sure it's fully sealed, 
and then keep it close to their body, like their belly, for mm. that body to retain their body heat, and then go straight to the site and and give the urine that mm. way. Are these people going with like fevers? Because <laughs> my body temp would never be warm enough yeah. to keep that little bag of pee. You know, though, maybe like if you put like a heating pad over. Mm your belly for like the ride over and then just immediately go in pee and then you know what i mean like i feel that i mean but you know pee temp i I don't know do they take the temp of urine yeah they do because I'm, i feel like it would be hard because you put like a heating pad on it then your urine's like 120 degrees <laughs> comes out ma'am are you feeling okay <laughs> are you all right but I, I just, I feel like it would, it's, anyways, when I read that, I was like, that is a bold gal. That is bold. Um, Wait, off top, well, I guess it is in topic. What is normal temp for urine? I think the same temp as normal people. <laughs> Let me Google it. Let me Google. 90 to 100 degrees. Okay. 90? Yeah. 90? Yeah. Within four minutes of waiting. How? 100 degrees? <laughs> it's normal. What is it? It gets progressively cooler or warmer as you go down to the body? Are we just dumb? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> We're over here. For the people, probably some people listening to this have faked a pee test. You know what, though? If you take the temp at home, do a couple trial runs, I feel like don't. we're not condoning this. I'm just saying, like, it probably is more possible than people would think. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of... I would just rather produce some clean urine. Exactly. You know? Just don't do drugs. Don't do drugs, guys. Just don't. Unless your doctor prescribes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's the only time. Unless they're clinically (laughs) indicated. Please don't do drugs. And even then, be careful. Don't... Because look at at what happened with the oxys. That's true. Use everything as prescribed. With caution. And with caution. For only as as <laughs> short amount of time as you need. But it really does, like, but that's, I'm totally off. I'm jumping all over tonight. But anyways. <laughs> so despite her checkered past regarding her employment, she was hired at the Lufkin, Texas, DeVita Dialysis Clinic. Mm-hmm. So at that time, Kim is married has two young kids one of which was the son that she had during high school and while she's married with her two young kids she is struggling with drug dependence and oftentimes was using stolen prescription medications that she got from the various employers she also had a a history of legal issues including arrests for public intoxication criminal trespass at one point her husband filed for separation as well as filing for a protective order after they had a domestic dispute. They ended up reconciling. So I think it really does paint a picture about what, I hate to say kind of person that we're dealing with here, Mm -hmm. but for lack of a better word, what we're dealing with. What challenges she might have been struggling with Mm -hmm. at that time. So in the springtime of 2008, uh, again, Davida started experiencing an unusual spike in patients falling seriously ill during their treatment. And EMS was called to the clinic roughly 30 times just in April. Wow. 30 times? Mm -hmm. In the previous 15 months, EMS had only been called two times. So big spike with her working there. Yes, huge spike. So this was obviously very concerning If you don't know, dialysis treatment usually lasts around four hours, and during that time, the patient is hooked up to a hemodialysis machine, which, again, is removing the toxins from the blood before putting it back into the body intravenously. Typically, patients come three times a week to have their dialysis sessions. Two patients, Thelma Metcalf and Clara Strange, experienced complications during their treatment while at DeVita, and both of them ended up passing away from cardiac arrest. So the significant increase in EMS calls obviously was very concerning since typically dialysis patients don't experience these type of emergencies. 
30 times in a very short period of time mm-hmm. versus only being called twice in the mm-hmm. 15 months prior. And that's a huge spike. Yeah. Following the deaths of their two patients on April 1st, DeVita sent out clinical coordinator Amy Clinton to the Lufkin Clinic, but the problems unfortunately continued. Paramedics, who were rightfully very alarmed about the situation, went on to tell their concerns to the superiors at Lufkin Fire Department, which prompted... um, I guess some kind of inquisition. I would say inquisition, but internal investigation is probably the better word uh, for the health department to come and investigate the clinic. Well, good thing those medics said something. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I feel like medics are always freaking smart. They're so smart and they're so no nonsense. I feel like Mm -hmm. they just know the medics like I work with, at least. They just are so... On point. Mm-hmm. All the time. L- Shout out to the, all the medics out there if you're listening. We heart you, medics. We do. You don't get as much credit as you deserve. You know what's so crazy to me? That medics, paramedics, they, I feel like they do the craziest stuff, but they don't have all of the same credentials as a nurse. I feel like they should be interchangeable. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff that we can do they can do and vice yeah. versa and they don't get paid nearly as much but absolutely ems in general when i was oh, yes. going for my emt i remember looking i was like this for that yep it's a huge like these are the truly the front line mm-hmm. you know ems is also front line staff yeah but ems like they're going into the actual scenes i, I could never i could I, never I, 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 oh clearly i couldn't either i don't know because i never finished <laughs> <laughs> No, but they deserve way more credit than what they get. So thank you to all the EMS services and and, uh, in the ER, you know, I love you guys. I am one of you. Appreciate. I am just the beginning of one of you. (laughs) I can't really say that because I've only done a couple of shows, but still. You're still there with us. I'm still there in the trenches. (laughs) But I'll tell you what I would not be able to do when I shadowed. The EMTs, <laughs> and we were going to people's apartments, and I was seeing, like, I was like, good God, this is not it for me. Oh, God, no. I could never. I could never. Like, and, and you know what? Also, credit where credit is due, the fire department. Mm-hmm. Also, they do, they're like the jack of all trades. Yeah, that's true. They and do. The, and the police out there, we, 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 uh, hats off to you guys as well. Yes seriously all of the emergency responders Mm -hmm. so not just the emts but emts also have a special place in my heart we appreciate you could not do what you guys do so thank you thank you guys (laughs) better us than you (laughs) i'll tell you going to people's houses no 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 yeah and then you think about all the ptsd like they see everything yeah they do so i uh again they shout see out every, to you guys. everything and all that glory glory all that feces horror yeah i mean don't get me wrong i love horror movies but there's a reason it's a movie yeah oh yeah for some of us for emts and other emergency services <laughs> <laughs> it's real <laughs> it's every day it's every day i tell you I give credit where credit is due. Mm. Certain things I'm not cut out for. See, like in the ER, we have them come in from EMS. So we see a tiny sliver of what they saw. But Mm -hmm. they come in, you know, sometimes you got people that are really messed up. Mm -hmm. And it's like the EMTs will tell you or the medic will tell you, you should see what the scene looked like. Like, it just was terrible. I give, I, you know what? I came from a very structured background. The most structured of all. Critical care. <laughs> <laughs> we got the patients. They were straight. Mm-hmm. They were not talking. They were sleeping. They were not, they were not screaming, running around. The ED, I'll tell you, even just being in the uh, behavioral health unit, I poked my head out 
into the real world of ED, and I, I closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. Oh, no. Hell no. Mm. I saw people with the, pre- the, the... I had... I Honest to God, I heard, like, the... It's interesting because the alarms for the monitors all sound the same. It doesn't matter what hospital you go to. <laughs> That's my theory. Granted, I've only been to a few hospitals. But all of the hospital's alarms... Because I used to... When I was a new nurse, I would hear the alarms at home. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've experienced that. When I first started, I'd hear them when I was sleeping. Like, before I fell asleep. Yeah. I couldn't, like... Or, like you... You know, there's that, and it's, like, I think if there's a cat in it, and the cat's, like, looks like the cat's waking up, and mm-hmm. they're, they're, like, honey, room four's alarm is beeping. Shut off the pump. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Because those, but there's also such a thing as alarm fatigue, and you mm-hmm. just kind of drown it out, and that's when horrible things happen. Yeah. So always keep an ear out. I know patients always come in there like, how do you stand all that beeping? And it's like, you just kind of get used to it, but you got to learn how to differentiate the beeping (laughs) and know what is, uh, you know, needs to be addressed immediately. Mm -hmm. I tell you, as soon as I went on the unit and I heard that crap, I was like, oh no. Good God. I'm back. (laughs) 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 But no, but I, I honestly, I've lost a lot of skills. I used to be the Foley queen. If you don't know what a Foley is, if you know, you know for a reason. You're if you're especially if you're not a healthcare person. Mm. But you know what a Foley is. I used to get them frontwards, backwards, sideways, side laying. That's my favorite. But you know what? No one's anatomy is the same. No. Sometimes no. anatomy, you think that your urethra is a ninety degree. No. Nope. It's a freaking 20 degree angle. For those of you who don't know, a Foley is a urinary catheter. It goes through your urethra. Um, so the tip of your penis or, you know, where you pee from. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a penis. <laughs> uh, or if you're a woman, through the tiny hole you pee from. <laughs> and... <laughs> Anyway, the this the, is why we get we have no sponsors. <laughs> 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 this is why they they hear the, yeah. this is why we have no sponsors. Oh god! <laughs> this is it's why true. they hear this and they're like, oh god, no. Because you know what? I I think what I usually do is I will either assume people know what I'm talking about, or I'll dumb it down to something so dumb like that people just. No, and I'm like simplifying it way too much. Anyway, the the catheter, fully catheter, goes through your urethra where you pee from, mm-hmm. and it goes into your bladder, so that people who are retaining urine or people who um, maybe need strict eyes and O's or input and output, we can measure it that way, or for various you know other reasons, maybe they're going to surgery or that kind of thing. But anyway. That's what a Foley is. And also, D, you want to tell them uh, what we learned about animals the other day? Oh, my my beautiful, wonderful dog had to go to the vet the other day. The ER vet. The emergency room vet because he fell, which was a tough. Ended up being a sprain. <laughs> but I went on Dr. Google and I freaked myself out. But you know what? He's older. Yeah. And you know what? It's better to just get some x-rays and rule it out. And I truly am in the camp that that is, I gave birth to that dog. And that is my son. So I would do whatever. But so we went and part of his workup, they wanted to straight calf him for urine while he was all versetted out. And I was like. Because he's a very anxious dog. So they had to put him under to do imaging and blood work anyway so they were going to do a urinalysis in addition i said hell no you are not gonna violate him just just because he freaking got bumped into and fell yeah but they were gonna straight cath him which is basically a urinary catheter that goes in the urethra it doesn't stay there like a fully 
But you go in there, get the urine sample, and then take it back out. Mm-hmm. But I did not know they did that for dogs, but it makes sense. They did that. They do that for animals. The vet has never recommended that to me. No. I don't think that's typically what they do to get a urine. I think they just get like a regular void. Yeah, I was like, I'll just put a cup under his, his him when he goes. Yeah, exactly. And I don't. Do they do UAs very often? I don't know. I've never had it done for him. Yeah. But also, if you have it and you have a pet, PSA, carry health insurance. Yes, PSA. PSA, because I'll tell you, that is expensive. Uh, pet insurance place in agencies or organizations sponsor us. <laughs> Hello. Sponsor us. We'll give you a shout out. I've been using you for years. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay. I don't know how the heck we got on the topic <laughs> of dog UAs, doggy UAs, and straight cats. But regardless, I digress. I digress. Okay, reiterate. Two patients passed away. So the health department comes, starts their investigation. On April 28th, 2008, there was another incident. While the inspectors were present on site at the center. Mm-mm. Two other patients, Marva Roan and Carolyn Rizinger, experienced severe drops in blood pressure during their treatments, which is not totally unusual Mm -hmm. for dialysis patients. However, two other patients, Linda Hall and Lurlene Hamilton, claimed that they saw Kimberly Clark Sands inject bleach (gasps) into Roan and Risinger's dialysis lines. How did they know it was bleach? Did they see that her drawing it up? Witnesses said they saw her draw up the bleach. Oh my god. Into a syringe and then inject that syringe or those syringes into the IV lines of both of the patients receiving dialysis. Both of the witnesses immediately told the clinical coordinator what they saw one of them said, I'm a little nervous right now, and I'm worried because she's assigned to me. Because keep in mind, they're there for dialysis too. Girl, I don't blame them. I would have said, get me the hell. <laughs> get me the hell up out of here. Mm-hmm. So the clinical coordinator confronts Kimberly, and Kimberly claimed that she was using the syringe to clean the unused dialysis machines, mm-hmm. which was not according to the DeVita policy. So, little slap on the wrist. As much as policies can be annoying, there is a reason that they are there. So, they go on to test the syringe in the bucket. And sure enough, they find bleach. So, the police are called and the clinic is shut down for two months. Dang. During their, that time, actually the day after the 28th, which should be the 29th. <laughs> Kimberly is fired and her, lurs- her, lursing, her nursing license is suspended. Mm. Good. Not only is that diabolical, but that's also like, you're doing that in view of other patients. Like... That's kind of stupid, too. Not only being completely evil, Mm -hmm. it's also dumb. Very dumb. We have the cutest Chewini here. She's a good little Chewini. Her name is Lily Munster. She she just bit Dee in the chin before. But Dee, you know, she didn't even break stride. Dee Dee didn't even break a sweat. I've had patients do worse. She just kept going. (laughs) A little chin nip never hurt anybody. And none of them are as cute as this girl. Mm. You get away with it because you're cute. Oh, I gotta take my finger back. You can chew it after. (laughs) So, I'm gonna say this wrong. Epididymologist. Epididymologist. Epidemiologist? Yes, epididymologist. Okay, that's wrong still, but okay. Epididymologist. How do you say it? Epidemia, epi, epidemiologist. Epidemiologist. Give me a second, because I, I had it and then I lost it. Epidemiologist. Epidemiologist. Good. 
research from the CDC linked Kimberly to every incident in April where a patient died. So she had been going at it for a month. Yeah. Right? Thank God the medics caught on so fast. Yes. Because if you think about it, that's not very much time. But if she was doing it as much as, like, the calls show that she was, that's a huge, like, that's pretty ballsy. So on her hard drive, she had Google searched how lethal leech was, which indicates this was premeditated Mm -hmm. and intentional. During questioning with the police, Kimberly admitted to the bleach use before the detectives mentioned it, claiming that she had used a syringe due to a lack of measuring cups. So she's trying to play it down. Unintentional. Yeah, I used bleach. Get ahead of the... Get ahead of it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Kimberly was arrested on five counts of capital murder and five counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon bleach so her co-worker candace lackey revealed that kimberly had intense dislike for several of the patients who had either died or experienced medical emergencies wow another co-worker sharon dearman recalled an incident where kimberly had a delayed response to going to a coding patient after she got back from her cigarette break oh lord So she's just a freaking crappy nurse. So initially the police and prosecutors were skeptical whether or not they had sufficient evidence to convict Kimberly. And why might this have been so lethal? Someone might ask. Hmm. It's because when bleach enters the bloodstream, it causes hemolysis, which essentially... Is destroying the blood. You're destroying red blood cells and your body's not able to use red blood cells like they should be. So it's, it can definitely be fatal. If not, you know, it can definitely harm people if it's in the high enough dosage. Beautifully said. And interestingly, it can also form something called a thrombus or a clot, which a lot of these patients were going in with cardiac arrest, which is a heart attack, which is a clot in your heart yeah so the heart attack can happen which ultimately causes someone to go into cardiac arrest in in some cases so on march 31st in 2012 an angelina county jury found kim guilty of murdering five patients and injuring five others prosecutors originally wanted the death penalty but on april 2nd 2012 Kim received five concurrent life sentences without parole for the murders, along with three consecutive 20-year sentences for aggravated assault. So they threw the book at Kim. Good. The murder victims were identified as Clara Strange, Thelma Metcalf, Garland Kelly, Cora Bryant, and Opal Few. So I just want to make sure we mention the victims' names because that's so, so important. And we don't want to just get caught up on Kim's story. We want to make sure that we're paying our respect to the victims and their families. So District Attorney Clyde Harrington suspected that more victims beyond the 10 existed based on the research from the CDC. A CDC epidemiologist statistically linked Kim to other adverse health events that had happened at the DaVita Dialysis Center. However, evidence collected by the Lufkin police detectives were limited due to medical waste from two weeks prior, hindering further indictments against Kimberly. So essentially, the evidence had been disposed of. During the trial, the victims had an opportunity to say their impact statements during which the daughter of victim Thelma Metcalf addressed Kimberly and she called her a psychopathic serial killer and expressed her wish for Kimberly to burn in hell. Kimberly's defense team filed an appeal with the 12th court at, at the state of Texas. However, the appeal was denied and Kimberly's conviction and sentencing still stands today in 2024. 
So she is not coming out anytime soon. And she is paying for the five lives that she took and her, the attempts made on the five other individuals. Good. She deserves it. And the CDC says this is just the tip of the iceberg. We will never know exactly how many people she um, injured. injured or killed. Mm-hmm. So the reason I just want to give a shout out to he who shall not be named. <laughs> because he who shall not be named, a.k.a. our brother, <laughs> is the one who told me about this case. So shout out to he who shall not be named. Yes, shout out. Brother. Brother, we love you, brother. Okay. Good job, D. as always. Thank you, Ree. You Excellent did so well. Excellent job with you and your knowledge base. We're just coming out here with the hemolysis. Well, and you the, brought up the hemolysis. Well, you knew what it was. And all I, I know. Because I just said the red vessel go shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I knew. Right? That's all I knew. Anything you want to add, Riz? No, anything you want to add, Lily? Lily says, no, I'm going to bite you. Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm going to call it. It is 2009. That is 8.09 p.m. for those of you who do not use military time. You suckers. All right. Have a great day or night or whatever time you're listening to this. And we'll see you next week for episode 32. Holy moly guacamole. We're coming up on a year. Yeah, in August, I think. That's not so far. We're already in March. Yeah, we're... March, April, May, June. We're getting there. Four months. We're getting there. There's nothing. Four months, Lily. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Good night.